Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So before we get into today's video, I just wanted to go ahead and give a big thank you to you guys for basically just sticking through with me. I know I haven't been the most consistent these past few weeks with uploading on my channel. Life has just been absolutely crazy. It's been really, really difficult for me to stay up on a weekly upload schedule, but I'm really hoping that since things have calmed down a little bit, um, I will be a lot more consistent after this one. I will be posting a little life updates video on my Patreon very soon, so if that sounds something that is interesting to you, um, make sure to go ahead and check that out. So the video that I have for you guys today is a little bit of a shorter one. Um, today's case is a very recent case, so there's not a ton of information. There is some information, but it just has not gotten a lot of coverage. So I thought that this case was a very, very important one to talk about and bring to your guys' attention. However, I will also say that this case does take place in the UK, so there are a lot of different places that I have never heard of. I don't know how to pronounce, so please bear with me as I try my best to to sound these words out and pronounce them to the best of my ability. I know that in the UK there's a lot of words that you don't say them exactly how you spell them, so I tried listening to how some people say it, but even with people's accents, sometimes it's a little bit hard to know what they're saying. Um, so again, just bear with me. You can laugh at me. I don't care. I'll try my best. But with that being said, let's just get right into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the disappearance of Leah Croucher. Leah Croucher is a 20-year-old young woman who went missing from Milton Keynes, England on February 15th, 2019. Leah was described by her parents as being a shy, introverted girl all throughout her life. As she grew older, she grew into a much more happy, kind, and confident young woman. Her father described her as being just a genuinely happy girl. She lived with her family in Emerson Valley in Milton Keynes. Her parents described her as being a homebody. If she wasn't upstairs in her room watching TV, she would be cuddled up on the couch downstairs watching movies with her family. She loved reading the Twilight books and was super into vampires. She was also into martial arts and she spent a lot of time practicing with her dad. She and her dad trained together and competed together in martial arts and she was really good at it. Around the time that she went missing, she was also working as an admin assistant. Now, February 14th, 2019, so Valentine's Day of last year, started as any normal day. She had a full day of work and walked home from work as normal. Once she got home at around 6 p.m., she changed into her jogger bottoms and left the house saying that she was going to be visiting a friend. She said that she was going to their house and that she was also going to be walking there. Then she got back from her friend's house at around 10 p.m. Her mother asked, how she was doing, how her friend was doing, and she said that they are just doing fine. According to Leah's mother, Leah was completely normal. Her behavior was nothing out of the ordinary when she got home. She just went upstairs and went to bed as normal that night. So the next morning, Leah's parents left for work before Leah got up at around 7.30 a.m., so they didn't actually see her before leaving. Then about a half hour later at around 8 a.m., Leah left the house for her work on foot. Once again, she started her day as normal and took her normal route that she always took to work. At 8.16 a.m., CCTV footage saw her walking on Buzzacott Lane and First Tin in the direction of her work, about a half a mile away from her house. At this time, she was wearing a black coat, black skinny jeans, black high top converse, and was carrying a small backpack. Under her coat, she was wearing her distinct gray hoodie with the colorful logo of her dad's Taekwondo Club Store B. Again, I am so sorry if I'm saying these words wrong. This route, again, was the one that she walked to work every single day, and it typically took her around 30 minutes. She was supposed to be at work by 9 a.m., however, she never actually showed. So sometime between her leaving her home, being seen on that CCTV footage, and her getting to work, she just disappeared. Obviously, it was very strange that she didn't show up to work, but... It didn't completely set off any red flags for anyone, so it wasn't until 6 p.m. when Leah did not show back home from work that her parents reported her missing to police. Immediately, police set out on their search for Leah, 
went around asking for tips and used cell phone data to track her location. Now, the first strange thing that police found was that her cell phone location was apparently turned off on her walk home from work the previous day at around 5.45 p.m. Police had confirmed that she had never turned off her location before this day, so this was the first time she had ever turned her location off and her location was never turned back on after this. They also said that Leah actually was not hanging out with a friend that night like she said she was. They had gone around and talked to her different friends and no one had actually seen her that night, so they have no idea what she actually did or who she was with. We also find out that around 8.34 a.m. on the morning that she was last seen, Leah's cell phone was actually shut off and was never turned back on. Next, we find out that there are three possible sightings of Leah the morning that she was last seen, all by three different witnesses between 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m., and each witness said that they saw her near First Tin Lake. So the first witness said that she saw a woman matching Leah's description by the lake typing on her cell phone sometime between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. The other two witnesses who are walking it together said that they saw a female who looked like Leah, also by the lake, who was visibly angry and upset and crying sometime between 10 and 10.15 10 a.m. Then, about 20 minutes later, the two witnesses said that they saw the same female once again, but that this time she was in a much calmer mood and was possibly talking to someone on her cell phone. So, of course, we don't truly know if this really was her, but even if it wasn't, police want to know who this was so that they can eliminate this person from their potential investigation. Even so, police did go out and search that lake, but but they did not find anything. Police also scoured the area on foot. They visited 4,000 different homes and spoke to 100 potential witnesses, but still nothing really came of it. Then by October of 2019, police received a tip from a woman who said that she was walking at the Blue Lagoon Lake in Bletchley that previous February. She told police that she had spotted a gray hoodie that said Stort B on the back near the water of that lake. So, of course, police went and they searched the Blue Lagoon Lake. They sent divers into the lake. They searched on foot and used sniffer dogs to search the surrounding wooded areas. They searched for a total of 10 days. However, as far as I know, nothing of significance was found and I don't think that they found her gray sweatshirt. So, by the end of October of that year, Leah's family came out with news that may very well be incredibly important to Leah's disappearance. Turns out Leah was actually having an affair with an engaged man shortly before her disappearance. I'm going to tell you everything that Leah's mother has told us so far about the affair. So she cannot yet release the name of this person for legal reasons, but the whole affair started in the summer of last year. She said that Leah was talking about this man all the time. She said, quote, it was X this, X that. She obviously had a soft spot for him. She'd go and see him in the evenings, paying 13 pounds for a taxi each way. She said that it just was not like Leah to do things like that. She was a homebody and she did not like going out much, like I said at the beginning of the video. It wasn't until the Till had been talking for quite a while that Leah's mother actually learned that this man was engaged. She said she remembered saying to Leah, don't you go falling for him. He will never be yours. And she said that after that, she was under the impression that Leah had actually stopped seeing him. But in retrospect, her parents believe that she definitely could have been lying. They said that her behavior started to change ever so slightly. They said that they didn't realize it at first, but after her being gone for such a long time, they said that they realized that she started to become more moody, which was out of character for her. They said that she was becoming more snappy and a little bit more argumentative. They said that after she would go out, she would go home and go straight up to her room and just sulk. But of course, at the time, they thought that this was just normal teenager behavior. She was only 19 years old at the time, so it's not unheard of for a teenager to be a little bit snappy and a little bit moody and a little bit argumentative. But at the same time, they said that she was not like normal teenagers. 
They said that she preferred to stay home and was perfectly content reading her Twilight books. She didn't really like going to nightclubs or anything like that, and her mom even said that she had to force Leah to go to the pub after her 18th birthday. She finally went after her mom convinced her, but she came home afterwards and said that it was just too expensive and not much fun. That's just the type of person that she is. But then on Saturday, February 3rd, only 12 days before Leah went missing, she told her parents that she was going to be booking a hotel room and having a girls' night with two of her girlfriends and that they would just be drinking alcohol and gossiping the night away. Her mother said that at the time, she didn't think anything of it. She was just happy that Leah was getting out and doing things with friends and knew that things like this was totally normal and it was something that a lot of young people did and it was something that Leah's older brother had done. So again, she didn't think anything of it. So Leah's dad dropped her off at the jury in central Milton Keynes, Birkenhamshire, and waved goodbye as she walked off. However, it wasn't until much later, weeks after her disappearance, that her bank statement had arrived and her parents found out that Leah actually lied to them about what she was doing that night. She had actually booked a room at the local travel lodge, which was a much cheaper hotel near the hotel that her father originally dropped her off at. So her parents think that Leah didn't actually have a girl's night. Instead, that she met this man that she was secretly seeing at this travel lodge. However, by the time they found all of this out, the CCTV footage at the travel lodge was gone, so there was no way to see who she was actually with that night. So now that we know all of this information, her parents have said that the night that she left on Valentine's Day to see a friend, when it turned out to not actually be that friend, that they think that she went to go see this engaged man instead, but of course that she did not want them to know. The weird and frustrating thing though is that police were never able to confirm who she was with that night or what she was doing for sure. There is nothing on her phone that they were able to find, no sign of a secret relationship whatsoever, no text messages. She did like to use Snapchat and we know that chats are wiped right after they are opened, but you can pretty much go into the settings, go into the data mode and find out pretty much everything that has been done on that app, even after it's deleted. So I'm sure police knew about this and I'm sure they are able to recover that. Hopefully, I don't know for sure, I'm just assuming. But if they did go and recover that, as far as I know, they haven't found any evidence on her Snapchat whatsoever. So there's a thought that maybe this man gave her a secret phone to use to communicate with him. However, I do think that police know who this man is and they have said that they don't think that it's him because he does have an alibi for the day that Leah went missing. But still, I don't necessarily think that this rules him out altogether. So now I'm going to be going over the main theories that her parents have talked about the most. So obviously, the first theory is that Leah had chosen to run off with this man. And this theory can go one of two ways. Either she chose to run off with this man and has just decided not to come back, or he is not letting her come back and he's holding her against her will. So obviously we know that she is secretly seeing an engaged man and we know that her behaviors changed right before she went missing. We also know that she was possibly seen by a few different witnesses talking on the phone to someone and acting very upset. She could have been talking to this man trying to figure out whatever future plans they may have had for them to run away together. But what's a little bit frustrating is we don't definitively know when she was seeing this man, how often they communicated, what their relationship was like or anything. I haven't even seen if this is some significantly older man or if it's a guy the same age as her or anything like that. I don't know what his job is. I don't know if he has a lot of money. I don't know anything like that. Now, it does say a lot to me that she turned her location off before leaving that night on Valentine's Day because obviously she wouldn't have just done that for no reason. The other possibility that comes to my head is that it's possible that they were seeing each other and then the woman found out that the two were seeing each other and that maybe she wanted revenge or that, you know, her and the man 
did something to Leah. Maybe before Valentine's Day, this woman found out, so that's why she started turning her location off this particular day. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe after this woman found out, the man said, hey, let's run away together. Let's, you know, go off and be together because my fiance found out about us and we're running away together. Maybe instead of actually running away together, the two did something to her. We have seen a similar situation with the Heather Elvis case when she was seeing an older man who was married and, you know, the woman found out and then the two allegedly took Heather and did something to her because of what the husband did. So I'm just mentioning that because it's not completely unheard of for this to happen or maybe the fiance did find out about it and that's why they run off together and they're still out there somewhere hiding out together because the fiance found out. But either way, I don't think this is completely random. I think if she did run off with him, there has got to be a reason why and I think the fiance probably has something to do with it. I did see in some sources something about this man being involved in an arranged marriage, which I'm not sure if this is 100% true because I didn't see it in every source, but it does make sense that if this was a marriage that this man did not want to follow through with, that he wanted to run off with Leah because he didn't want to be in this relationship. He wanted to choose who he was in a relationship with, so instead of getting married to this woman who he didn't really want to be married to in the first place, he just ran off. And maybe that's the reason they chose to run off together. But at the same time, I feel like with Leah being such a homebody and how much she loved martial arts and training with her dad and just being with her family and watching movies, I just don't know how she would have been able to leave and just never come back. I'm a homebody as well, and as someone who loves spending time at my apartment, just being at home and being comfy, it would just be so hard to up and leave your entire life, the comfort of your home and your family, to just start a new life. But at the same time, her parents say this might be the first time that Leah has actually fallen in love, so she may be completely head over heels for this guy, and of course, that can make someone act in ways that they've never acted before. She can think that this is exactly what she wants. She can think that there's no other way to do it other than running away with him and being with him forever. So again, she could be acting in ways that she never has before, so that's something that we definitely need to keep in mind. The other main theory in Leah's case is that she was simply taken off the street on her way to work that she was walking and that someone stopped by and took her and that she is no longer alive. Obviously, her parents are desperately hoping that this is not the case, but the more time that passes, the more unsure they get. However, with this theory, there's a lot to it that just makes it very unlikely. First of all, she knows martial arts and she's good at it. She knows how to defend herself, so it would not have been easy for someone to take her without a big fight. Plus, the route that she walked to work was a pretty busy one. You are very visible to other people walking by, passing cars, and people just in the businesses surrounding. Plus, at the time that she was walking to work, it was rush hour. It would have been even busier than normal because everyone was heading to work at the same time. So given the fact that she knows martial arts and how busy it was, it seems like it would have been almost impossible for someone to just drive by and snatch her off of the sidewalk without being seen by a single person. So that part of this theory does not seem likely at all, but obviously if the sightings of her on the phone are true, then this theory is pretty much impossible. Now, I do want to mention two things that stood out to me a lot. First, we know that there has never been any activity on her bank account after this. So to some people, that can indicate that she is no longer alive. However, it could just as likely mean that the man that she is with has set up a secret bank account for her and maybe she's been working secretly and paying for things or that he's just straight up using his own bank account has just been paying for everything for her since they ran away together. So again, I think knowing how much money he makes and if he does make a lot of money or has a lot in savings or has a big inheritance or something, I think that can tell us a lot about 
if she did run away with him. The other thing that I want to point out is that we know that she turned her phone off the morning of February 15th and never turned it back on. But then she was possibly seen talking on the phone with someone else that same day after her phone was known to have been turned off. So this to me definitely points out the possibility of her having a secret phone. If it really was her talking on the phone, we know that her phone was turned off and never turned back on. So obviously the phone that she was talking on at that time was not her phone and that it was a secret phone. I think that it's way too much of a coincidence that she just happened to be exhibiting all of these weird behaviors right before she disappeared and then started hiding things and turning off her location and turning off her phone right before she disappeared. I personally think that it is very possible that she wanted to run off with this man that she was secretly seeing. I think they easily could have had a secret meetup place that he was going to meet her at a different time or day and that his alibi was during the time and hours after she went missing. They could have been talking on secret phones the morning that they were going to meet up and maybe they had planned to meet up the next day or a few hours later on the time that wasn't exactly right after she was last seen so that he would have an alibi. Again, I don't put a ton into the whole alibi thing because I imagine police are probably going off of the hours or maybe even the whole day after she was last seen, but if they had a meetup place and they wanted to make sure that he was not suspected, they could have chosen a completely random day to actually meet and actually set off on wherever they were going. She could have hid out on a cash-based motel or anything just so that she could hide out until there was a good time for them to meet. But that's just me, I'm just speculating at this point. But in my opinion, at the end of the day, I think it's very possible that she ran off with this man. But I think for whatever reason, he is not letting her come back. Now, something in this case that happened that is absolutely devastating and tragic is that Leah's brother Hayden has actually died. Now, shortly after Leah went missing, Hayden got in trouble for threatening Leah's ex-boyfriend and he went to court for all of it and all that, but it was resolved after they had agreed upon a restraining order, so the original charges were dropped. However, 24-year-old Hayden Croucher died almost nine months after his sister went missing from taking his own life. His father posted about it on Facebook and is just the most devastating and heartbreaking thing imaginable. He wrote, what kind of life is it that you can speak to your son on Thursday evening to reassure him that we all feel the same sadness at Friday the 15th approaching? Nine months with no news about Leah is a terrible thing to face. We promise to meet up the following day so that we can face it together. Hours later, police knock at the door and tell you that Hayden is fighting for his life. The doctors say the prognosis is bad. You sit by his bedside and watch him deteriorate minute by minute. You have to say your goodbyes. What do you say in that situation? You tell him you love him. You reminisce about the funnier times. You beg him to come back to us. Finally, you have to tell him to go and be at peace. You hold him as he slips away. To say our hearts and minds are broken is an understatement. Hayden was a kind, funny, generous, witty, and loving person, and in his own words, an amazingly good-looking bloke. He had a huge heart. He was only 24, too young to be gone forever. He has left behind two families and friends that loved him dearly. We will always miss him, always. Be at peace, Hayden. If Leah is up there with you, look after each other as always until we get there. We love and miss you both terribly. Our world could not be more broken than it is now. So to me, this makes my belief even stronger that Leah is out there somewhere being held against her will or that she's completely closed off to the outside world and media altogether. I don't know her, obviously, and in a lot of other cases, we can always speculate that, oh, they wouldn't stay hidden for this long. She would have come out on her own accord by now, but in a lot of situations, you never know. It has happened to people that you would think would never go missing on purpose and stay out there for that long. However, I truly believe that she would have come back after her brother died if she knew about it or if she was able to come back. I know she would have wanted to go to his funeral, so the fact that she's been missing for over a year and a half now is 
very, very concerning, and I don't think she's chosen to be gone this long. Leah Croucher was 19 years old when she went missing on February 15th, 2019 from Milton Keynes, England. She is described as being white with a slim build, brown shoulder length hair, and sometimes wears glasses. She was last seen wearing a black coat, black skinny jeans, black high top converse, and was carrying a small black backpack. Under her black coat, she was wearing her distinct gray hoodie with the colorful Swarpy logo. Anyone with information can contact police on 101, quoting reference 4319-0049-929 or Crime Stoppers anonymously at 0800-555-111. There is a $5,000 reward for information leading to Leah's return. My heart goes out to Leah's entire family. I can't even imagine losing two children and having no idea what happened to one of them. Please, again, make sure to share Leah's story. I have some great articles listed below if you want to look at that. Make sure to either share this video or share some of those articles or anything. Leah's case needs more eyes and you guys can help me make that happen. So now I want to know your guys' thoughts and theories in the comments below, but please be kind and respectful. This is a very recent case. It is a very sensitive case. Like I said, there's just not a lot of coverage on Leah's disappearance. So again, please make sure in case the family or anyone close to the case sees this video, make sure to be very kind and respectful in the comments. But either way, I do want to know your guys' thoughts. Do you think that she went off on her own with this man, or do you think that something else is at play here? Let us know down below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime videos every single week. Also, don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. That is how I knew about this case and pretty much every other case on my channel. So again, if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to send them over to that email. With that, I hope you guys have a really great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.